Welcome to the 12th video in the series called Video Standards, Signals, Formats, and Interfaces. Today you will learn more about HDR and related opportunities, guidelines, and pitfalls. About the optimal ways of HDR content monetization via automated dynamic range conversion. And about the HDR content metadata and HDR display behavior. We will compare HDR10 and HDR10 Plus formats and we'll talk about the consistent brightness profiles and why HDR content can be dangerous. When you launch a new HDR project, you have to ask yourself one important question. Which format to grade first, HDR or SDR? Or maybe both in parallel? Or one after another? Well, the right answer is HDR first, then the automated conversion to other HDR flavors and SDR, and final checks by a human operator. Manual SDR color grading may produce images drastically different from the intended look and with noticeable artifacts. Mixed HD, UHD, and SDR, HDR environments require software and hardware engines for auto enhancement, up, down, and cross conversion within and or between all formats. SDSDR, HDSDR, HDHDR, UHDSDR, and UHDHDR, and don't forget the various flavors of HDR. In this situation, with software and hardware tools calculating and measuring actual content light levels, statistics, normalizing and mapping image gradations, checking, adjusting, and editing, metadata is vitally important. Comparing an HDR PQ original with the various converted images, we come to two conclusions. Parallel HDR and SDR manual color grading is not only slow and expensive, but quite often the results are suboptimal. Adaptive, automated, down conversion typically produces good SDR images, but human QAQC and occasional tweaking may still be needed. There are two extreme cases of the interaction between HDR content metadata and an HDR display. One, metadata telling the display what to do and not offering any options. This is the classic master-slave model. Or two, metadata telling the display about the values of content parameters and not offering any instructions. All decisions are up to the smart display, meaning up to the display designers. Both cases can be undesirable. There is a third and optimal way. Let the display select from a limited number of options prepared by the content originator. HDR10 Plus supports this model. However, it doesn't work well for traditional broadcasting where hybrid log gamma is a more appropriate format. HDR10 metadata provides the HDR display with, to put it mildly, a mixture of unnecessary, insufficient, and useful information. HDR10 is optimized only for the brightest scene. This is the so-called static tone mapping. HDR10 Plus is a backward compatible extension of HDR10. SMPTE's ST2094 standard defines dynamic metadata for color volume transforms, or DMCVT format for short, used in HDR10 Plus and elsewhere. The ST2094 standard does not define the methodology or algorithm of DMCVT derivation. This is up to the content originators. Content encoded in HDR10 Plus will also play back on HDR10 devices. The dynamic metadata is simply ignored. When the ambient illumination light level goes up, the range of visible gradations moves upwards too. Therefore, all gradations of the rendered video image must also go up, matching the visible range. Adapting to the ambient light condition implies optimal light levels remapping by a smart display. In a dark home theater, a dark image looks fine. But to look good in a well-lit living room, all video image gradations, including the dark ones, have to come up. We should be guided by two slogans. Number one, consistency is more important than performance, meaning 
A consistent 4 quality mark for all segments is better than a 5, followed by a 3, then a 4, then a 5, and a 5, and so on. In filmmaker's language, sweetening means getting consistent colors, voice, pitch, loudness, and so on, for all of a movie's segments from start to finish. And number two, a happy viewer is the only measure of success. For HDRPQ content, the list of parameters for consistency checks should include the segment's frame average light level, or FALL for short. This example shows that for HDR, an ad insertion may lead to average brightness conflicts and much stronger than would have happened in SDR TV. SDR content could be good or bad, but except in the special case of red flashes, it was never thought to be dangerous. Without appropriate control and restrictions, HDR content may pose dangers in several aspects. High brightness and high contrast cause eye fatigue, quite strong in case of short viewing distances and large angles of view, for example, the new UHD TVs. Long, high brightness segments significantly increase power consumption in large UHD HDR TVs and battery discharge in mobile devices. Long, high contrast segments may cause HDR LCD screens to overheat due to occasional local dimming control failures. And this HDR PQ advertising example shows what may happen in the absence of any rules at all. This video was prepared for you by a team of experts, produced and narrated by Joseph Mark, a member of SMPTE's HDR committee, written by Dr. Victor Steinberg, co-founder and president of VideoQ, technical awards winner and author of the Video Standards book, conceived by Roderick Snell, co-founder of Snell and & Wilcox and winner of several technical Emmys and Queen's Awards. Technical consulting was by Maxim Lefkoff, author of the Video Encoding Cookbook. This video series is brought to you by VideoQ and you can download these slides and this video from VideoQ.com. VideoQ makes products and services for all sorts of video and audio processing and quality assurance. Based in Silicon Valley with software developers and distributors in several countries. Thank you for watching.